Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. The Classics by the Bay, show and shine here in Portland, southwestern Victoria, is a great event that's been growing every year. And when you add a little Mad Max into the mix, we're about to find out how that turns out on this week's episode of Classic Restos. This year at Portland, there's something extra special. Producers George Miller and Byron Kennedy had no idea that their 1979 Mad Max movie would have had such an impact. And here we are, some 40 years later, with a couple of special guests featuring from the movie here in Portland. But there's an incredible car show happening here as well, right by the bay on one of the most picturesque environments that you would ever want to spend your Saturday. The guy we blame is this one right here. Craig Dennett, in conjunction with his wife Renee and a small team of competent enthusiasts, the Portland event never ceases to meet the expectations of the entrants as year after year, regular vehicles and some new entrants set the scene. Various charities are carefully chosen and are supported around the area from the proceeds of the day. And now it's time for me to go to work. Moving through as we do here at Portland for 2020. How are you, Merv? I'm good, thanks, Rich. That is great. Mate, you've got a 1977, a CM Chrysler, one of the, the first of the CM. What I like about it is how plain and original that it looks, but where it's interesting is that this car has been restored, right? Fully restored from a yeah from a written off wreck to a, a three hundred dollar body and all fully restored, fully rebuilt. It's amazing how it works. This shape, Valiant, the last of the line, finishing in nineteen eighty one, of course. Um, it was probably the model that got the least spotlight, but technically, in so many ways, it was it was the best Valiant made. It was the best of the whole lot. Yeah, I was the service manager. At the Portland Chrysler dealers at the time, and I reckon they were the best Chrysler ever made. They're a beautiful car, they're finished beautiful. It got interesting though, around in 1981, we, we had the release of well, the, the VH Commodore and of course XE Falcon and that European styling. Uh, you could see where the Valiant, uh, they still use plywood in their consoles. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and covered with a bit of bit of um, carpet, and yeah. It's <laughs> I think what I love it was almost like a rebellious nature of Chrysler Australia. We'll stick with this shape, which was revamped from '71 from VH all the way through. Um, it was the last of the uh, American-inspired Australian design car, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they sort of lost their shape after that when they went to the yeah the Mitsubishi's. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Merv, with this particular car, uh, it stunned me to think that it had a different colour interior. It was a, a different coloured car. But when you look at what you've done here, the restoration, uh, I haven't actually quite seen a restoration um, that's brought the car back to a stock look. But as I said earlier, it's hard to tell it's been restored. Yeah, yeah it's good. I spent two years playing around with it so yeah it took a long while and a lot of effort to get it back to where it is. Merv, I want to thank you very much for bringing this car along. Um, the four-door car, uh, the plain Jana as you would, these are the cars now that are in the garages, the cars that are sought after and uh, well it's the old saying mate they're not made anymore. No, and they're getting dearer and dearer so yeah. that's good good investment. Yeah. Good on you mate, well done Merv. Thanks mate. Moving through our Mad Max content here at Portland for 2020, boy do I have an icon beside me? This man was the main mechanic in the first Mad Max movie, and his name is Murray Smith. How are you, Murray? Good, Blitz. Very well, thank you. Thanks for coming. Not a problem. Pleasure to be here. How do you feel when you look around and see the, some replica cars here today? Oh, it's good that someone's followed on the passion for something that uh, we thought was just another movie. What was the feel back in 78 when you were preparing these cars? Um, Unfortunately, at that time, it was just another job. Uh, it was just a job I did, and uh, now I wish I could do it all again. Were they good cars? 
they finish up all right yes <laughs> okay tell us a story about the uh, the black interceptor that mel gibson drove okay black interceptor started originally as a white vehicle um then it was converted um changed it was uh, mechanically it was 351 uh, gt um, modified in a panel shop and then modified again for handling purposes the supercharger was false in in its operation uh, and that was it that was about it i guess and what about the MFP car that you drove earlier in the film, uh, like the replica behind us? Were they 302s, 351s? Okay, one was the 302, Fletch. The 302 had a, a C10. Um, a C10? A C10, yeah. Um, it was actually a blueprinted police vehicle. It was a crime squad vehicle. The other one was a 351. Um, that was a Hume Highway patrol car, um, both off-white in colour. The other cars we had, the uh, we put one car we had that blowed a lot of smoke. It was an old taxi from Geelong. Um, that, that, that was the uh, that was an XA, wasn't it? That was an old XA. Yeah, we, we put that through the phone box uh, and rolled it over. And the Holden, if, if you uh, remember the Holden, it was a six-cylinder LS Monaro. With when we first got it, it, had no marks on it whatsoever. It was green. It was owned by an old couple that travelled around Australia in a caravan. Okay, so we're talking the, the car that the Knight Rider was That's was correct. driving. Yes, yes. Um, now I heard that that was uh, that was a Geelong car once upon a time. It possibly was a Geelong car. It was fairly local. Yeah. Um, when it was painted up, it didn't look right. So we were our our officer at Q at the end of at the end of the old freeway. Yeah. At the end of the freeway, there's a heap of trees at the time because the freeway stopped at Q. And the director said, this car needs to be looked, rough, looked rougher than what it is. It's got to look like it's used. So the boys drove it through these trees to scrap what, it up. Well, how, what, how did that feel then? Did you think, oh, what are we doing to this nice car? Well, at the time, I didn't know um, what the future of this car was going to be. We didn't know uh, where it was going or what was going to be done with it. Um, later on in the movie, we did put a rocket underneath it and send it to its doom. Uh, <laughs> Unreal talking to you, Murray. It's been Thank wonderful. You, I, I really appreciate your time. That's all right. No, it's been wonderful catching up with you all these years in such an iconic movie and speaking to key people that played an integral part. Uh, again, Murray, thank you very much. Uh, a pleasure, Fletch. Thank you. I knew she was the one. The heart's going a million miles an hour, the mouth's dry. It's love, mate. Pure and simple. In 71, this was the fastest four door car in the world. Back then, you could pick one up for a bit over four grand. Insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. No one knows your passion like Shannon's. And with our multi-vehicle discount, you can even cover your daily drive. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2020, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2020 Detroit tour with Fletch. G'day g'day guys. Um, oh mate, look at the look around today, everything's just brilliant. Unfortunately our weather hasn't been great, but the turnout we've got for that weather we've had rolling around us, threatening us all day, it's just been fantastic. And uh, we our main show this year was just wrapped around those uh, that Mad Max theme, which we had Dale Bench and uh, Tim Burns and a couple of other blokes with their cars, um, Jeff O'Loughlin and uh, Peter Axford, mate. The attraction those cars brought here today and those guys with their questions, it just turned this show from something that could have ended up bad with the weather to just absolutely brilliant. So to uh, everyone else that brought their cars and bikes and toys along, spectators, fantastic effort. Well done. Don't forget, this, this show's on every year at the same time, third weekend of February. If you haven't been here before, make Make the effort and get here. The town will appreciate you. We will look after you. The town will look after you. It's a great spot, great venue, great show. Once you've been here, you'll want to keep turning up, just like Fletchy does. And also on, on Fletchy, uh, that guy, he put this Mad Max thing together for us out of his own goodness, and it's been brilliant. Another special part of the day, a guy that's travelled from Melbourne over to Portland. How you doing, Pete? Good, mate. Yourself? Good, mate. Thanks for making the trip and being a part of this uh, Mad Max part of Portland for 2020. No worries, no. Proud to be a part of it and 
good uh, fundraiser and good bunch of people, so why not? Mm. Good on you, Pete. Now, you've had this car a while. It's uh, obviously the, the Interceptor car from the first Mad Max. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. I had it for 18 years, and I bought it as a really bad... It was a bit Mad Max, but it was really bad. So we basically, over the years, bit by bit, stripped it and resprayed it and just added bits and pieces to it and all, all the stuff to make it what it is. And, um, yeah, I love it. I love being a part of it. It's great. You must get some looks, mate. Yeah, it's good to share it with these guys because... Yeah, we all grew up with it. So you're at a service station or somewhere at a car show and seeing a guy who's just like, this is awesome, I, I get it. Because it's, it's, like I say, it's a part of you yeah. as a young fellow growing up. Yeah. It's cool. Isn't it good now, uh, 40 years down the track, that, that we've got guys like Johnny the Boy and we've got Dale Bench, uh, you know, Murray Smith. The behind-the-scenes guys, or well, guys that had parts in the film, uh, still getting a, a lot of credit all these decades later. It's uh, With all due respect, uh, there was others apart from Mel Gibson. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, Mel obviously is the pinnacle, but um, all these other actors and, and all the people, just uh, the crew and the stuntmen and the and, every, and the people are just involved in the whole thing. It's interesting talking to Murray too. Uh, some of the speeds that they uh, that they got out of yeah. the cars, like just off yeah. camera having a yeah. chat. Um, what, what what an incredible time back then, 1978, getting ready for a release, a movie in 1979. Yeah. But the excitement, uh, an Australian movie. Yeah. Um, what a time. Absolutely. I mean, the cars, you think back, the cars weren't that old back then. When you actually think about it, like that's 74, and they're all, and it was 77 to 79 it was filmed, and released 79. I mean, they weren't that old, were they? No. Well, <laughs> you, know. you hear stories of Murray, you know, like getting a Monaro and running it through trees to rough it up a little bit. Like that, that's, it's like sacrilege now. I know, I know. And look, all of a sudden, you know, we've all got a story where you had a car, you know, like XB Coupe, I bought it for two grand, yeah. two and a half. And I uh, wish I still had it, you know. Yeah, that that yeah. Everyone's got a story like that, and yeah. that's, that's that's great. I mean, yeah. Good on you, people. Look, no, uh, yeah. I know you do the circuit with your with your partner, yeah. uh, Emma, yep. and uh, you go to a lot of these shows, mate, and uh, yeah. you keep up your great effort. Thank you. It's good to yeah. keep the dream alive, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Thanks for having yeah. us, mate. Appreciate it. No worries, Pete. Good o. Take care. And some more Mad Max in just a moment. In the meantime, how you doing, Steve? Oh, not too bad. Fletch, yourself? Good, mate. Great. What's going on here? Oh, uh, well, we just thought we'd bring our roadster down here. Um, we know a lot of the guys. We come down drag racing for years down at Portland. And uh, when they had the car show on, we thought, well, we'll bring our 39 Ford Roads down for a bit of a bit of a trip down here. Beautiful car, Steve. You'll have to edumacate me on this one yeah. uh, from, from the ground up. What, uh, what's it based on? Uh, it's based on a 39 uh, Ford Roadster chassis. Everything else is hardly 39. Um, it's got a uh, coast-to-coast American body on it. Um, runs an LS1 four-speed overdrive, electric windows, air conditioning, electric, computer, electric, computer. electric suicide doors too. I, I yeah, saw it. yeah, the remote. You yeah. press it and the doors and boot open. Not while not while you're going along though, right? No, I've got little pins in there to stop that happening. A <laughs> guy told me once what it can happen. <laughs> Sixty kilometres an hour, and the doors come open. Not not good. They look like <laughs> Billy McMahon's ears. <laughs> exactly. Uh, removable roof too, Steve. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, um, because it's a roadster, it's obviously convertible. Mm. Uh, but with the hard roof on it, it certainly makes for a nicer, more usable car. Yeah. Um, problem is in Victoria, you know, it's either stinking hot or stinking cold, so roof off isn't an option that often. But and it's certainly best of both worlds. You've got that old school, cool styling class all day long. You've got your mods in there as well to make you nice and yeah. you know comfy at home sort of thing. This is what it's all about. Being a bit different too with our cars, um, that to me is just, uh, it's something that uh, you'd see at the Riddler overseas in the States. Yeah. It's, a, it's a quality thing. Yeah, the, um, the same body shape um, won the, uh, America's um, best hot rod a few years ago and it was painted the opposite colour, so uh, red on the bottom, black on the top. So I think the reason that car was originally painted, that colour was that because of that. Steve, wonderful catching up, mate. Thank you for sharing uh, your car with us, mate. Thanks for being here. Good on you, mate. See you soon. Ta-da. No stranger to classic restos. You've been on the show before and he's back again. Dale Bench. Yes, the donut stunt rider in the township of Clunes from the first film. How are you doing, Dale? I'm pretty good, Fletch. And how are you? You're looking good like always. Thank you, mate. Welcome to Portland. What do you think so far? Yeah, in, in uh, summer in sunny Portland, it's... Uh, I enjoy the relaxation here and enjoying the whole vibes. It's great, yeah. I think it's just caught a lot of people out by surprise here, hasn't it, eh? You turning up? Yeah, well, myself and, and uh, Johnny the boy, like, uh, he's the man. Uh, but uh, 
but yeah, I think uh, people are coming across us and realizing, oh, there's a couple of beautiful replica cars and a couple of guys that are that are still not bad for. 42 years ago. It also, it puts the theory to bed that you weren't killed in the movie, because apparently this bloke died. He's been dead for years, apparently. Yes, I've read that, and, and I look in the mirror, and I'm, I think I'm still here. I think it's the same guy. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll just describe quickly the bridge scene with what happened in the movie. OK, two bikes. They We had to go along about, I guess, about 60 kilometres an hour. They took the speedo and tacos off and wet surface and we had to lock the back brake and lay the bikes over but I hung on to the bike for a, probably about one second too long and the tyres bit in and flipped over and I went with it and uh, hit the kerb on the bridge and the other bike's front wheel hit me in the helmet and I'm dead yeah <laughs> Tell you what, mate, you're doing great for a dead bloke. Dale Bench, wonderful to catch up with you, mate. It's always a pleasure. Oh, Fletch, it's, it's great to be anywhere that you are. So, love you, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thanks yeah. for making the trip. Thank all you. Right. Thanks for inviting me again. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Cheers, mate. See ya. <laughs>
very close to the family. Okay, now before we go any further, uh, tell us the year and month of the car, do you know that? Uh, September 1960, wow. my grandfather bought this one brand new, so uh, I was born December 1960. So, Grandfather's car from brand new, well, that, that really tugs at the heartstrings, doesn't it? It does that too. Um, when we got hold of it, my grandfather passed away in 69. Mum took that over then, which was his, uh, his daughter. So we've had that. I've got three brothers and a sister, and we've all done our learners and our licence in it. Drive-ins it's been to, Jim Carner's church fundraising, all that sort of stuff, it's been around. See, something like this never leaves the family, and that's the nice part. It just goes to show that the passion is just there, right through. It's it's like a limb, isn't it? It, it is that. I mean, you look around here, you've got some nice thumping V8s and all those yeah. sorts of things, but this one's more of a heartfelt car. This yeah. one, that means yeah. everything to us, so, yeah. and my kids and my wife and everything like that, and brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah they all love it. And it's got a nickname in the club, it's... Uh, it's a prefect, but they want to call it a perfect. So they want to swap it around because that's what everybody thinks of it. That's the other aspect of classic restos as well. It's not always the high end and the and the big dollar cars. Um, I've got a respect for everybody with all different uh, makes and brands of classic cars. And uh, you've made the show today, Graham. And thanks for coming along and uh, and sharing and sharing it with us. Yep. Yeah, no, thanks very much. It's not so much the best or last, but I've got to say it's an honour to catch up with this guy, Timmy Burns, Johnny the Boy from Mad Max. How are you, Tim? Oh, Fletch. It's. Uh fantastic it's a real pleasure to meet one of the living legends of Australian TV and of uh, one of the great shows of all time classic restos but in particular in this context in this extraordinarily beautiful location in Portland the part that you played Johnny the boy I mean wow you uh, you did yourself a, a lot of big mischief in that first movie what was it like to work with Mel Gibson and just just describe the atmosphere of of that time around the cars and the bikes? Well, when I first uh, read the script, Fletch, I could feel, you could feel the thump, you know, you could feel the pulse of the road, um, right, and it was a real page turner and it represented something that I'd never seen in a script in Australia before, I'd never seen in Australian movies before in, in quite the same way and it, and it really, I remember saying to George at one time when everything was going wrong, you can't stop here because you're doing something very important. I said, I don't know what it is, but you've, you've hit a pulse. There's a pulse here that's going to mean something. And it meant, it meant everything to the kind of people who are here today at this uh, Portland, you know, uh, re car restoration um, sort of meeting is that all of these people have that sense of the road and the, the role of the car in, in their life and, and you could feel it, you could feel the sparks off the road as the motorbikes went around the corner, you know, you could feel all of that and, it, and, and also it was, you know, the, the late 70s and the, the kind of way of making a picture, we didn't have enough money so you had to, it was a triumph of the imagination. Mel was the perfect character to play a naive sort of not sure of himself, innocent, sort of a little bit rabbit caught in the, the headlights sort of character, but who was a genius in the car, who had that, like I talked to George the other, other day about it, that somebody who was a kind of almost idiot savant, who was an unbelievable driver, but didn't understand much of else of what was going on about, except what they had to do. Just a couple of the scenes of the movie, and there was a few that you were renowned for. The one where you were taken into the water with the, the double barrel shotgun uh, up on the roof of your mouth. Now, a bit of a fun fact here, I believe that that actually did hurt you. Uh, well, it did actually. I, I have to give a bit of the background. The, the, one of the keys to the movie that people don't understand is the performance of Hugh Keysburn, who played the toe cutter. He really created an extraordinary uh, sort of ensemble group that made the bike gang. It wasn't like a typical bike gang. We thought we were the heroes of the movie. We thought we we were the goodies and the and the bronze were the baddies you know so that was part of the what helped made it uh, believable but um, the scene on the beach 
what happened was the light started to go and we couldn't keep filming the scene the way we had to and the only way that we could actually s film it was if we went out into the water so that was never the written in the script or the intention but in a way what it did was make it like a kind of baptism scene you know in the water and Johnny the boy becomes uh, sort of is in the process of becoming a made member a fully fledged member and when um, Hugh put the shotgun into my mouth and turned it round it was um, the whole thing you know, like hurt a bit and it was it uh, created a very sort of scary and uh, dramatic scene. It was it terrific. Was, got to do the line, Tim, when Bubba Zanetti came up to the toe cutter in the back of the ute and it was Johnny the boy. He's done it again. This time it's a scrubber. He'll never learn. Is that right? Well, that that's that's very very good. I mean, I I can't really judge. I'd have to have Jeff Parry here to like really sort of say to me that was better than anything else in the movie. And uh, I, you know, I would love to be able to do it do it like you did, but oh, I I've forgotten how to do it, mate. You're too nice, Tim Burns. Wonderful catching up with you, mate. Johnny the boy from Mad Max. Uh, an absolute pleasure meeting up with you. And again, thank you for coming down with Dale Bench. Uh, talk about the dynamic duo here today, mate. It's it's been a pleasure. Thank you. No worries, mate. And your show, like, it's a very important show. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on around, but you, what it shows is your respect and love for all these people who do all this work. And it doesn't mean much to people who don't always understand cars and that, but a lot of heart's gone into it and people really make the effort. And the fact that you record this and, and you make it part of our history is a very important thing. So thanks, Fletch. Very good job, mate. You're You're a, you thanks, you Tim. are an absolute, absolute legend. This is one of the real guns. So everybody, like, never forget what a great man this Fletch is, eh? Thank you, Tim. Good on you, Tim. Well, how cool was that? I hope you've really enjoyed this week's special episode of Classic Restos. Here at Portland, Victoria for 2020, the Classics by the Bay, and of course featuring Dale Bench and Tim Burns from the original Mad Max movie. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching the show from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.